Hey, what's up guys? It's Patricia from tarantulaheaven.com and today we have a different setup. I have Spidey on my coffee table right now for two reasons. One, because she's right here and I'm hoping that this is going to give you guys an actual view of her because I know that where I usually film, it's kind of hard to see her when she hides in the back of her tank and also because I'm doing some spring cleaning in her, uh, where her tank usually is. So just for the sake of the videos, I'm going to have her out while I shoot a few videos, but she will be going back to her safe spot because as you can see the jealous cat is right here and while she usually loves staying in this spot she's very curious and also jealous of Spidey's fame so um, we have to put Spidey back right after we shoot these videos because we don't want the cat to start inspecting the tank um, or have any trouble so anyway, um, welcome to my channel if you're new. I put out tarantulas and spider facts every single week. So if that interests you, please subscribe. And today I'm gonna talk about tarantula fur slash hair and um, urticating hairs and uh, give you some cool education about that. So if you have never touched a tarantula, I wanna be the first to tell you that it's like the softest thing that you will ever touch. Um, tarantulas get a rep for being really scary, but they're actually, they feel like the silkiest little cats that you could ever feel. Um, now I'm not saying that to recommend that you all get tarantulas or touch your tarantulas because of course there are definite risks associated with that and you need to be aware of that stuff. But um, tarantulas are super soft and any tarantula owner who has actually held their tarantula or given them a little pet on the butt um, knows that they're really really soft. And um, also always use safe handling techniques and no defenses and warning signs before you touch your tarantula or even attempt to handle it. Okay, disclaimer. <laughs> disclaimer over. So while tarantulas do have um, hair that is like really soft and kind of mimics or kind of looks like animal fur, it's actually completely different. It's not even like real hair. What it is called is setai. And um, this is what the scientific name for tarantula hair is. And it actually serves a completely different purpose. So while animal fur or hair is made up of protein called keratin, tarantula hair is actually made out of more like cellulose structures and that's called chitin. And the purpose is totally different as well. Um, for example, mammals might use their hair to communicate or keep their body temperature regulated, but for tarantulas, that is completely different. Um, not only can they not regulate their body temperature, but um, because their eyesight and they don't have ears or uh, their other senses aren't as strong, their hair is actually used for, um, or the, their setai, I should say. Um, their hair is actually used for um, vibrational stuff. They actually use it to sense the world around them. It is a complete sensory organ for them. Um, so they use this to perceive the world around them. So that means that they can smell and technically hear through their, their setai. And now tarantulas have different kinds of hairs too. Um, one of the ones that people most tend to get worried about is the urticating hairs, which are kind of on the back of their abdomens um, on the top. And this is usually looks like this like silky patch of hair if you look at it, but um, it is actually used as a defense and a lot of new world tarantulas, actually 90% of new world tarantulas have these hairs and they will usually use this before biting or use it as a primary defense for tarantulas who aren't as uh, defensive. And now old worlds do not have this urticating hairs, what they actually have is more potent venom, which kind of um, evens that out. But for new world tarantulas, these hairs protect the spider. Um, what they will do is if they do feel threatened, they will kind of turn around and they will raise one leg and kick those hairs off into the air. A bunch of them will fly off. And if you get any of these on you, you will know not to ever mess with your tarantula again. You will get extremely irritated and itchy. So you don't want any of these hairs um, coming at you. If you happen to see your tarantula lifting their leg like they're gonna kick hairs, you want to get out of there right away. And the reason why these urticating hairs hurt or are so irritable is because they're actually lined with these little barbs. Um, they're microscopic and uh, they attach into whatever they latch onto. So it's hard to get them off. And once they're in, they kind of stay there. They can cause severe itching, irritation, and allergic reactions for people who are unlucky enough to be allergic to a tarantula. Now, urticating hair is not visible on tarantulas at first. It's actually not visible out at birth or in slings. Uh, you actually have to go through a few molts, um, and it doesn't really appear until they're in a juvenile stage. So when tarantulas are first born, they look like these little plastic little 
I don't know, blobs. They're just, <laughs> I don't know. It takes them a few months to actually start looking like tarantulas. And this is what I've kind of noticed with Blinky. Um, Blinky is my Arizona blonde sling. And um, I'm not really sure how old. They just molted not too long ago. So I'm gonna start tracking the molts. That was the first time they molted in my care. So, um, but Blinky still very much looks um, like they don't really have any hair. Um, I when I look really, really close, they look like they're starting to get a tiny bit of peach fuzz, but for the most part, Blinky looks like really plasticky right now, and I expect that that's going to be that way for a while, so it'll be a, a, probably a, a bit before I see any urticating hairs on there. And something that I learned in researching this is that there's actually different types of tarantula urticating hair, which I had no idea about, and I've never actually seen this being spoken about before, so um, maybe we'll all learn something here. So there's apparently six different types in my research, and the really fascinating thing about it is that in my research, I found that these six different types are kind of used to target different predators, um, to defend the tarantula against different attackers, I guess. Uh, so what I read was, um, type 2 is not usually kicked off, it's delivered by direct contact, I had no idea that was a thing. Um, type 3 urticating hairs are best for um, vertebrates and invertebrates, and um, types 3 and 4 are most irritating to um, mammals. And actually not all types of irritating hairs are, are present in all spiders. So different tarantulas, I guess depending on where they live and what kind of threats are around, they might have certain types of urticating hairs. Um, you know, I guess they're not born with all of them. So I thought that was really, really interesting. I had no idea that was a thing. Um, so I might try to do some more stuff on that in another video. Now, if this is your first time learning about urticating hairs and you're a new tarantula owner or you're thinking about getting a tarantula, um, don't be intimidating. You can protect yourself from urticating hairs or other tarantula defenses such as biting. Um, of course, the number one thing is preventative uh, behavior. So you want to educate yourself about the defenses of tarantulas and their body language. How do they show fear or that they're being threatened? Um, you also want to educate yourself on proper handling techniques, um, as well as how to test your tarantula's temperament. So don't go into getting a tarantula until you have all of those basics covered because you want to be prepared for anything. This is an unpredictable animal, and while they're beautiful to look at and they're precious and it's a great hobby to get into, this is an animal you do not want to be unprepared for at all. So, um, so you can definitely protect yourself um, from accidents or anything like that through just being prepared and educated for what you're getting yourself into. Um, but another thing that tarantula owners do, um, a lot of them will wear gloves, like latex gloves or surgical gloves, um, to protect themselves against hair. Um, and this is also useful for people who, um, a few people do, sometimes people do find the hairs minorly like irritable um, if they have very sensitive skin. So um, you could kind of um, avoid any accidental direct contact with the hairs and protect yourself like that. Um, I also wanna mention that a lot of people do wear goggles too when they're cleaning the tank or around their tarantula because accidents happen and sometimes you don't know what your tarantula's gonna do. Um, so and some of them are incredibly fast, so they might kick off hairs before you can get out of there. And you definitely do not want these hairs in your eye or um, getting into your mouth or your nose. Um, in those cases, you're probably gonna have to go to the hospital because you definitely don't want any respiratory issues or uh, any vision um, repercussions or anything like that. So in those cases, definitely go to the hospital. But if you just get them on your skin or on your hands or anything, um, you can definitely take them off. Uh, a lot of people use uh, duct tape to stick it onto your skin and then get a uh, take it off and get the hairs off that way. Um, you can also just wash your hands in mild soap and water um, and then like apply either an anti-itch cream or um, like a hydrocortisone cream um, or you can also take an antihistamine to kind of just, you know, in case you're feeling itchy or irritable to um, take those effects out of there and, and kind of uh, decrease the discomfort. So anyway, uh, I hope you learn a bit about tarantula fur or hair. <laughs> um, I definitely did, especially the part about um, all the different types of urticating hairs. I didn't know that was a thing. Um, but anyway, um, so yeah, tarantula hair, it's more complex than it looks. And I hope that you found the pictures that I provided um, really educational. Um, I think it's really cool to look at tarantulas under a microscope and um, see what they're really about. So anyway, um, <laughs> thanks for watching guys. And uh, if you want to see more of my stuff, 
You can definitely visit the links below. I have a tarantula magazine that I'm putting out every two months called The Spinneret. I also put out a Tarantula Tuesday newsletter every week. I put out videos like this one every Sunday. Um, and I also have a educational tarantula website called tarantulaheaven.com if you're interested in visiting that. Um, but anyway, thanks for watching. Please subscribe if you liked it and leave me a comment below if you learn anything or know anything else that's really cool about tarantula hairs. Thanks. Bye.